How are we doing, guys? Hey, Frank. Frank, Frank. Frank. how you doing? Uh, coach, if you want to make an opening statement, uh, and then we'll raise your, raise your hands, please, for the microphone, and I'll call you out. Yeah, I think anytime you can uh, start a year 2 0, you're on the right path. Um, and so that was our goal uh, to take care of this game. It was the most important game because it was the next one. Uh, we challenged our team uh, to be beyond uh, reproach, to, to take a uh, game, the first one, uh, although milestone historic as it would, put it in its proper place, look at the next opponent, and do the things necessary to prepare for that opponent. I think we were mature enough and we did those things uh, to come out victorious. And so, pleased to be 2-0, uh, but certainly a lot of work still um, to go to get where we want to be. We'll take our first question over here on the left. Uh, everything seemed to be clicking for you guys today. Was there anything you saw that might need to be improved? Laundry <laughs> <laughs> list. You know, so here's what I said to the team. Uh, we set a goal. We, we claimed victory tonight. And so we'll enjoy it. And then uh, when we meet tomorrow, Sundays are about the truth. And we'll speak the truth on Sunday. And uh, we're honest with our, with our team. They're young men, and they need to be told the truth. They, uh, and we need to have ownership of it, own it. Um, identify it, and then go out on the practice field, correct it, that it doesn't happen again. Certainly a lot of really good things. When you think about being 100% uh, in the red zone, uh, 500 yards total offense, um, and then defensively, the lowest offensive opponent output ever in the history of the school, um, and the defense played extremely stingy in the first half. I don't know if they crossed the 50. Um, we kicked uh, our special team unit in the first half was outstanding. We pinned them inside the 20. I think their starting drive was maybe the 17-yard line or so. And so those are the things that, that, that's winning football. Uh, but at the back end of the second quarter, uh, we picked up several penalty, penalties, so whether it was excessive celebration with the fans in the end zone um, or personal fouls for doing things after the whistle. Uh, that's not championship. That's not who we are. We're, we're not that team. And um, when you turn the ball over four times, eventually uh, it'll catch up with you. Uh, when all things are even. And so um, I wanted us to enjoy it, uh, but by no means happy with nine penalties, four turnovers, um, and putting our defense in a position where they have to defend inside the 20-yard line. That's not championship fo football. We won a football game, but right now we're not a championship football team. Um, and I know you're probably wondering, how could you say that, Coach? You won 51-17. I'm, I'm honest, and that's the truth. We didn't, we didn't play a game. Um, the way we're capable. Now, the good part is we still have not played our best football yet. Our, our best football is still ahead of us. The good part is we have a lot of young guys that took the field. I think our participation a week ago was 52. Today we were 75 or so plus. And so that's a good thing, that more people are getting involved in, in the game and contributing. The reality is, though, we coach every one of them the same way. And so their accountability for this football team is a sincere one. And it's not he's young or he's inexperienced, so uh, what else could you expect? That's not acceptable to turn the ball over four times. It is not acceptable uh, to jump off, off sides and do those things and have miscues. And so um, we'll fix them uh, and we'll get better. We'll learn from it. And so uh, a lot of very good things that happened today, but a lot of things that need to be rectified and, uh, and we will fix them. Right in the middle, Joe. Coach, what, what goes into the decision to eventually take your, your starters out and play some of the guys that, that, that haven't gotten that experience. You, I mean, I know Sturm and, and a lot of those guys were in there for the full first half. Yeah. Do, do you have a plan going in for something like that, or is that something you make on the fly? Yeah, you know, we, we, we don't plan. We, we respect every opponent. We go out anticipating uh, a fight and doing whatever it takes to win that fight by any means. And so whether they had to play every snap of the game, 50%, uh, 75%, or 80 once we were in a comfortable position of the game, uh, even at that point, you know, we're, we're up 40-something or so uh, right before half. And it's a perfect example for us or an opportunity for us to work on our two-minute drill. That's not an opportunity to, to kneel on the ball and just take it in the locker room uh, because it has nothing to do with our opponent. It's about us. And for us to take advantage of that opportunity to work a two-minute drill, a third and medium drill, a third and long drill, it's critical to the development of our football team. And so we wanted to uh, take advantage of that and put our, our players in position where they were taking meaningful snaps. 
And we're not just taking a, a snap or a play to be doing so. And, uh, and we said to those guys who potentially were going to get in in the second half, the same accountability will be there. And so um, that opportunity presents itself. We don't have a, a plan to say we're not playing guys. We're going to redshirt him. Uh, those guys who are next up are called to duty. And they go into the game with the expectation of performing. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to operate in, in that manner. Coach, uh, any worries of a letdown? I don't think you had any, but those were put to rest early because your guys came out offensively and defensively and took care of business right from the opening whistle. Yeah, we, we, you know, I said that early in the week when, when there was some discussion of uh, that um, as our players were being allotted for the work that they did, that they could be a potential let, letdown. And uh, I don't know how it came, we won one game. <laughs> One, one football game, and uh, we haven't enough in the history of our university put together consecutive wins. And so I could see, okay, you won the first one, and you now you're attempting to go to the second. And uh, one of the rare times we're favored. And so could there be a letdown because of that? Uh, I think that starts um, with the leadership of the football team. That that's immature, that's unprofessional, and if you allow that to creep into your team where you're ill-prepared for an opponent because of contentment or the, the notion that you have arrived because you won one football game, uh, it's not happening, not on our watch. And so, uh, no, I didn't fear it would be a, wet, a letdown because that, that was never going to happen. You talk about the game Dalton played great again, yeah. two weeks in a row. Yeah, I, I thought he was smart with the football. I th thought he made good decisions. There's a couple of times he ran and I would like him to get down because I don't want him just getting hit to be hit. Uh, but outside of that, uh, he checked into all the right plays, at, whether it was run pass, pass run, or run to run, or pass to pass, changed the protection, identified the things that were necessary, and allowed us to operate in a manner that was ideal. Uh, I thought he played very well. He played, I thought he played his best game today. Coach, the uh, defensive line early in the game just seemed to have their way out there. What was um, what were you seeing out there from there? Yeah, you know, we challenged them uh, to take the line, to take the line of scrimmage. You know, it's it's the DNA of our football team. This football team is built on toughness, and I say it all the time: big men lead this football team. And so, when we were in those positions, you know, it's a trait that we practice every week: barricades and uh, get off the ball, credit card alignment, attack. First step: shoot your hands, run your feet on contact, uncoil your hips, and push the defender back offensively or defensively respectively. It's what we do. And so when we're, uh, when we're in those positions, we challenge our, our guys uh, to do so. I thought our defensive line did an outstanding job of uh, keeping the integrity of their rush lane or their gap integrity and in run game and really collapsed the pocket and, and won the line of scrimmage game, uh, the line of scrimmage match, uh, thus allowing us to be in advantage situation both offensively and defensively. Frank, can you talk about the uh, special teams today? How, how do you think they did and, you know, just overall the first two weeks of the season? Yeah, uh, I, thought, I thought they did really well, you know. Um, two, two miscues that are glaring. Uh, you can't miss the PAT penalty or not, um, the first one. The second one, you can't continue to turn over the ball. When you turn over the ball like that, um, it, it's not acceptable. Uh, you, you, you can't do that. You can't turn over the football. And so those two things... Uh, we're glaring, and uh, we'll have to rectify that. Outside of that, I thought our kickers kicked the ball with the appropriate height, distance, that allowed our coverage team to get down there inside the 20 and make tackles. Um, I thought our punt team protected well and got the distance and turnover of the ball to flip the field when we need to do so. I thought our return units gave us great starting position, uh, possession at the 25 or plus yard lines on each one of our returns. Um, so I thought our, our special teams played well, but those two things make it ugly when you have uh, stuff like that that happens. I just want to follow up on something John asked you about Dalton. Uh, watching him, it looks like he's taken a step or two up from last year. Have you noticed his game, his mental uh, approach, everything that goes into being a quarterback, taking a couple of steps up from last year? Yeah, you know, besides the physicality uh, part of him adding muscle, uh, in the experience part of him playing football games, the biggest thing that he did for himself was really um, embraced
because he had a thirst for knowledge and wanted to know more. And we say to our players, bring it, come in, come in, challenge us. And I say to them, you say to your position coach, to your coordinator, to your head coach, coach me, coach. I want more, coach me, challenge me to be better. And so we were able to do that with our, our summer curriculum and things of that nature uh, with our team. And I thought we made tremendous strides in becoming a much smarter football team, a more intellectually inclined football team. And so although we're bigger, faster, stronger, we're smarter than we've ever been before, especially at the quarterback position. That's allowing him to make great decisions pre-snap as well as post-snap once the play happens because he has anticipation. Last question, JJ. Frank, tomorrow starts uh, Texas State Week. A lot of people are going to be excited around here about that game. Uh, just some thoughts headed up to uh, San Marcos next week. Yeah, well, we look forward to playing them. Yeah, we'll, we'll show up. We'll be prepared. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Runners.